Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, you might have noticed we got some data in today that the market did not like. And so we're going to go into that. We talked about this yesterday, how the charts are going to change. And a lot of them did. But shockingly, there were some stocks we're going to point out today. Wasn't that bad, right? Or maybe they dropped and then they bounced. And, you know, we talked yesterday, if we get bad data, we'll big money or, you know, the hedge funds run to safety. And that's exactly what they did, right? It's never failed. As soon as you see rate cuts get pushed back, it's the 2023 playbook all over again. Okay. And we'll go into what I'm talking about when I say that and stuff. And tomorrow we got even more big data coming out, more red folder news, which hadn't had a good track record this year. We'll go into that as well, because that could affect markets as well. And if we look right here, here's the data in case you, you know, live under a rock or you work full time, you don't have time to keep up with this is what I'm here for. Inflation data came in red hot. And you can see inflation rate month over month, headline 0. 0.4, consensus 0. 0.3, inflation rate year over year 3.5. Look at the previous, 3.2, right? Consensus 3.4. And then you go down and core is the exact same way, right? So not good. And when that happens, yields spike and the dollar spikes. And the market don't like this one bit. You can see that, look at that right there, straight up. Okay, actually the 10 year yield spike twice today. And when you see, of course, the market's going down. Oh, close the market, please. And of course, what happens? This is crazy. This was yesterday I showed you this. So this is all that matters right now is these rate cuts, right? They had a 56% chance of June. Look at today. Woo, right off the bat. Boom, dropping to 20% for June now. Look at that. That's a huge drop. 80% chance they're saying, and this can change. This can change tomorrow's data. This can change next week. This always changes, but it's never been wrong going into the day, right? What's even more shocking is look at July. This is the one I didn't expect. Now all of a sudden they're saying, hmm, 54% chance say they don't even cut in July. That's the one that was really surprising. Maybe an overreaction we'll see. And I'll talk about something one of the Fed presidents or a couple of things the Fed president said today. But again, tomorrow I'm going to put this up front. So at the end, you have PPI, right? The month over month, year over year, and you have jobless claims coming out as well. The Fed loves to look at PPI, and I'll go over how it's been lately. But when you look also, Fed president speaking, then you have a 30-year bond auction, which I can't wait to see how that goes. And when you look at how PPI has been looking, you can see right here is the same problem. Actual, way over, not even close, 0. 0.6, actual 0. 0.9. Forecast 1.1. 1.6 and now they've doubled the forecast from last month to 2.2 right and so you would think you would come in under that and you gotta think again anything at it or under it the market's gonna love it it's especially gonna rally after today and then again if you get a crazy and then again if you get a big miss well buckle up right and i want to throw this in here real quick but it's the credit card debt and this is what's just insane right when you look at it, it keeps going up but when you look over here, look at the bottom. This goes back to 2003. When you talk about the increases, look at that over the last two years. And why is this? And before we continue, guys, please hit that thumbs up. And think by hitting the subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Do daily updates and Saturday videos answering any questions you have. Appreciate your support. Because not only do you have inflation, which people keep talking about, I'm like, forget inflation. That's just the increase of prices. It's where we've gotten on prices. Like just like I was saying in Discord, the level of what things cost. And yes, my family and I are, you know, we're lucky enough, whatever, uh, to build a fort stuff. I'm sure most of you are. But does it suck? Because remember, if, I always look at it this way. Every dollar Walmart charges me more than what they charged me three years ago, which is a lot. I don't mind 2% increments every year, but it's way higher than it was two or three years ago. That's stuff that's not going in our retirement accounts. That's the way I look at it, right? And maybe stuff is not going on into a vacation or something, right? It's just going on the same crap I was buying three years ago, but I'm paying way more for it, right? But for the folks who out there who are, you know, working hard and at no fault of their own are struggling, right? Because they're paying way more at the grocery store, way more at the pumps, way more everywhere. Like everything is so much more. That's the, So inflation went to zero tomorrow. Just look at the prices we are left with. Like that is not good. I mean, you got to be kidding me. And the reason why, and think about this. These people who aren't able to pay these credit card debts off every month are screwed because these rates, have you flip over your uh, credit card statement, look at the rates. We pay ours off every month, so they don't really care about that. And, and we switch around credit cards, so we have those, you know, no interest for two years. We take those deals. But I'm serious. Look at the rates. And so there are people out there just drowning. Somebody, one of the members shared something about um, 
uh, buy now, pay later stuff for groceries. I'm like, right? People are doing that now for groceries? Like, oh my goodness. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Insurance, you, you name it. It, it is crazy, man. I don't know what these young people are doing coming out of college and how they're affording stuff, but it's, it's, it's how to can't I always ask people what the solution is. Like, how do you bring them back? You got to bring these prices down. I'm not talking about inflation. I'm talking about the actual prices. Like they got to start coming down and be re reset and where you get them on a curve like this instead of like, bing, boom, like this. All right. That, that is not sustainable for the long run, folks. It just is not. Anyway, I gotta, I'm going to get off my soapbox on that one. Now, SBX, here's the thing with the charts. Watch this one right here. It's like all the rest of them, right? Because obviously on the hourly, you get these smaller time frames. Again, you're downtrending again. You're having these lower highs, lower lows, right? And so it's still, but here's the crazy part. Still well within the weekly expected move, by the way, just FYI. I mean, we may have had a, a down day, but it is still within that weekly expected move. I thought for sure we'd be below it today. But the one that got hurt the most was the Russell. We'll talk about the, that one in just a second. But when you look, I mean, obviously you're sitting here, you're mitigating a fair value gap, you're mitigating a gap down here. So it could it continue to drop on more of that? Absolutely, right? Watch the NASDAQ 100 because it's bouncing off this 50 here and it bounced off of it last week. But, you know, again, if that breaks, as you've seen in the past here, that can absolutely cause more downside and more selling to happen, okay? And so, you know, it's one of the few that actually is hitting its 50 moving average. I'd love for the S&P 500 to hit its 50 moving average. That'd be nice uh, before we, you know, either want to make a big move up or start consolidating sideways again and before we hit earnings and stuff. But we'll see how, what happens. Let's just check off one and see if the other ones start hitting them as well. And I'm putting this one on here instead of Apple. Apple is a very interesting chart to look at if you hadn't looked at it because it's coming to an area where it definitely could bounce because it's bounced multiple times in the past. But you can see the inflection of, you know, this market rally is taking place while the second weighted stock in the S&P 500, you can see February 9th really is where they cross paths between the RSP, which is the equal weight ETF, and Apple. But make sure you look at Apple's chart because, you know, could it get a bounce? Yes. And you're starting to see some bullish divergence on the RSI. And the reason I want you to think about that is because I'm showing you the market has rallied the S&P 500 without apple well, apple has been going down doing you know nothing good right so if apple all of a sudden bounces second highest weight weight to stock in the s p 500 okay and actually starts to move back up what do you think that's gonna do with the market right and so that's what i want you to at least you know watch out for that okay and so because we showed this how cpi comes in hot ppi comes in hot and the market has still rallied over the last three months okay and so i'm you know the daily reaction doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing two weeks from now you know what i'm saying so just watch out for that one and also if you're an apple fan and you want to get into apple stock look at for it but i mean a lot of people get in the 150s but it's in a good spot to bounce now iwm obviously got crushed today because this one is what is very sensitive to rates right because a lot of their companies have to carry a lot of debt and if you look there's the big gap down you can barely even see it at the bottom it's like oh my goodness got below and actually closed below today the weekly is just right below the weekly expected move, but it, it is at a bounce point. Like this is where it's bounced multiple times. So if tomorrow's data comes in hot, we'll see if this one's going to get punished even more. I'm going to pull this out here or not. That's really the key question. But th these are the companies that are going to get absolutely crushed if that data comes out even worse tomorrow and yields spike again. Okay. Now, and the crazy part is how many times we've we seen yield spike sometimes and the market still go back up, right? Just because it's hitting maybe some oversold territories, things like that, that's something else to watch out for. And it's also below that trend line right there, which is hell for a long time. So that is broke now, okay? Now, NVIDIA, this is where they ran to, guys. This right here drops in the morning, and look at this recovery. Just absolutely soars right up to the top of that channel. Why? What they do? They use the options market to push it up. It, it, Amazon, NVIDIA, they ran right toward them, but NVIDIA was the big one, right? And so they pushed the market, but not the market, they pushed this stock right back up. They ran into Meta, they ran into Amazon, and they used the, the, the options market to do it. And it basically just trended right on down, just bouncing off that channel right there. Matter of fact, I'm looking at it now, it's actually just closing right above this channel, okay? And will it break out of it and start heading back up? That's what we're going to have to see, because obviously we looked at this the other day, and you can see the higher, lower highs, lower lows, all the way down in this channel right here. But is this going to start to turn up? Is, are they going to start to push uh, this stock back on up? Because it's a safe haven, right? They kind of know when earnings come, most likely, you know, this one's going to do pretty well. And we're starting earnings season, right? So, you know, we'll see. When things get bad, they usually run for shelter. Because there was other 
AI type stocks. I'm talking about stocks that actually are infrastructure stocks that build out these call centers, these data call centers and stuff like that. And so those are green as well today, which is kind of crazy to think about it, but that's the way it is. Money's got to go somewhere. That's where they went. KRE, I'll tell you right now, terrible day for it, which we expect, right? Uh, but this thing is holding up way better than I thought it would hold up. I thought, you know, in March when the whole lending program was going to go away and rate heights keep getting pushed down the road so their bond portfolio just looked like hot garbage. This one's held up shockingly better than I thought. It's down. And that white line down there is definitely where you don't want to go if you're into regional banks. But again, if these rate cuts keep getting pushed down, I would expect this to keep dropping, which of course will hurt IWM. Now, in phase, this one right here ended prayer for the day, but I got to tell you, man, if you hadn't drawn that trend line right there, that trend line is a trampoline for this stock. I mean, look at this. We talked about like, it on Sunday, maybe, right? Or maybe even last week. I brought this up a couple of times. And I mean, look at these pops. These are, you know, one day type pops, most of them. Look at the day. Ended up red, but look at the pop. As soon as it hits up to the penny, just springs up every single time. And again, the chart was like crap when you pull out on it. But, you know, that, that trend line, man, mark it down. That's uh, So far, it's a winner. Eventually, maybe it'll break, right? Now, shop this head and shoulders, still playing out down way down the day, right? And we talked about this one with that MACD. You can see right there where that target is. It would close that gap down there in the 50s if it played out like that. Again, you know, head and shoulders don't always have to play out to the penny. You don't have to play out at all, as a matter of fact. But again, when you're looking at this one, just the MACD, wait for it to cross the zero line. Again, it was a fake out this last time. The signal line did not come across that zero line. Wait for that right there is your best bet because when it does, that's when you're going to have the big moves and shop because it is a high flyer when it moves. And again, as you can see, when it's dropping, uh, it can drop pretty fast too. So we'll see if this one continues to play out. Another head and shoulders, obviously, Palantir. This one continues to play out as well. So, you know, if the, and again, if the market rallies, if we have PPI coming in the line and all of a sudden the NASDAQ is up 2% and all this stuff, you know, these are going to get negated, right? I mean, these stocks are going to have big moves back up. You know, it's bet money on it. And again, this is one of those ones. So this one, the target would be right in a gap as well, right? And this was the one I was telling you right up there, that little shaded area right there. That's where people were waiting to short right there. And if you look at it, that's what people started to do. It popped back up in that fair value gap, which is also an inverse fair value gap, which can be resistance. And then they started shorting it. And of course, so far they're winning the bet. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. And again, if it PPI comes in hot and the market sells off, this is going to start breaking. Because it's held up a lot better than I thought it would, but this will start breaking some levels you don't want to break. Now, Roblox is another one, green. And you see the last four days, right? No matter what the market's doing, this thing is up. All right. And so one thing that happened for this one is they're trying to increase their revenue. And Roblox is uh, my son plays this game all the time, him and all his friends. And, you know, when you look, Roblox taps ad tech firm Pubmatic, they do a basically a deal. And so now they're going to try to increase the revenue. So the market's like, yeah, we love it. Let's go. So money start to go there again. This is still in stage one, cannot break out stage one. It reminds me of a fintech stock. Right. And there's companies that need these rate cuts more than anything else. And it's definitely EVs and fintech okay we know it's small caps but evs and fintech right these every time those rate cuts get pushed back these just stay in stage one right here and just sit there and, comp and continue to falter and so those are definitely two sectors to keep a watch list on because if we ever get to that day where we get rate cuts and no recession obviously these two areas are not way overbought right because they're not 300 percent and so keep an eye on the stuff and that's definitely things i'm keeping a list of okay what what areas are not, you know, have been taken advantage of yet. And so in the future, you may be able to do that and stuff. So let me know in the comments how you think PPI is going to come in. I know a lot of you said CPI was coming in hot and it definitely came in hot for sure. PPI, this will be the third month in a row, I believe. Uh, this happened if it does. And again, I showed you what they're projecting, which is, that's a, that's a big increase, you know. So we'll see how the market reacts to it and stuff. Uh, let me know what you think. So anyway, please hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. And uh, we'll see where the market takes us tomorrow. And then, of course, we still have, that'll be Thursday. And then Friday, of course, we're going to have uh, more data coming out, which would be nice. So, uh, by the way, put your question in the comments you want to put in Saturday's video. And I'll start putting that together as well. So, hope you have a good one, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow.